Hello, we are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX Show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. Today's episode is going to be different to normal and I think I might continue with these videos for now. Rather than posting a SpaceX updates and a Starship updates episode each week, I'll be merging them into one video. The reason for this is that there's a lot less SpaceX updates at the moment, especially given the current situation, and there could be weeks where there is potentially little to no SpaceX news other than Starship. What I'm planning is two videos per week containing both Starship and SpaceX updates and this will allow for more up-to-date news. With that being said, today we'll take a quick look at various new SpaceX updates, then head over to the SM3 vehicle, take a look at work in Boca Chica and finally see the latest on SM4. So without further ado, let's head straight in. We're going to start with the final cargo dragon that recently returned to Earth. It was launched on March 7th and arrived at the ISS on March 9th to begin its almost month-long stay at the station. During this period, the 2,000 kilograms of cargo it delivered was unloaded and the 1,800 kilograms of return cargo was loaded into the vehicle. On April 7th, the spacecraft was unberthed from the International Space Station using Canada Arm 2 and returned to Earth for a successful landing in the Pacific Ocean. Next, the booster B1058.1 that will launch Bob Benken and Doug Hurley on the first crewed and second demo mission for Crew Dragon has had an addition. To mark the return of human spaceflight from American soil once again, the NASA Worm logo as you can see here was added to this Falcon 9 booster. As most of you will know, the last time astronauts launched to space from American soil was when the space shuttle was retired in 2011, but Crew Dragon should change that in May. On another Crew Dragon note, back in January before the in-flight abort test, Bob and Doug along with NASA crews practiced the boarding procedure. They suited up for their dress rehearsal and headed out for pad 39A in a Tesla Model X because what car do you use when you have futuristic astronauts heading to a futuristic launch pad to board a futuristic rocket? A futuristic car of course. After arriving at the tower, they gave a wave for the cameras, then took a lift up to the 265 foot level of the tower where the crew access arm is. They then took a stroll through the bridge to see the capsule that then performed an in-flight abort test a couple of days later. Recently, on April 3rd, SpaceX and NASA teams completed an end-to-end -end emergency egress rehearsal. According to this NASA article, the primary objective was to demonstrate the team's ability to safely evacuate crew members from the launch pad during an emergency situation. As unlikely as these procedures are needed in reality, for NASA and SpaceX, safety is a top priority, so these tests are important so that if anything does happen, everyone knows exactly what needs to be done. In other SpaceX news, Jonathan McDowell has recently tweeted that a third Starlink satellite has re-entered the atmosphere. He said it was launched in January and it raised itself to a 350 km parking orbit, but then on February 15th, it lowered itself to 300 km orbit. Then, on March 16th, it began its orbital decay before it re-entered on April 2nd. There was most likely a technical problem with the satellite that couldn't be fixed from the ground, so that's probably why it was deorbited. So whilst 362 Starlink satellites have been launched, a little over 350 remain as some were previously lost and others deorbited. However, according to this Space Flight Now article, some warnings were recently released to Mariners suggesting that we can expect another Starlink launch soon. At the moment, the launch is currently scheduled for around 9.31pm UTC or 5.31pm EDT and will bring the constellation size to over 400. Also, in other launch news, the GPS free launch I talked about in my last SpaceX updates video has now been postponed. According to this Space News article, the Space Forces Space and Missile Systems Center has decided to reschedule this launch. It was originally supposed to launch on April 29th but will now be no earlier than June 30th. This statement by the Space Force says the decision was taken to protect staff as the COVID-19 pandemic worsens in the Cape Canaveral area. So while SpaceX is planning to perform some internal launches, I don't expect that we'll see many, if any, customer launches until the pandemic dies down. Now, let's head over to Starship, which is still progressing at pace because as SpaceX are classed as critical infrastructure, they need to stay open. We'll begin in the launch area where SM3 recently collapsed during its pressure tests. It was dismantled and taken off the test stand a few days ago. Here is a really good look at the SM3 thrust section and you can see that there are a lot of valuable components that are still intact. So for SpaceX to reuse these components makes a lot of sense and will really help in speeding up the process of SM4 which in a minute or so you will see is progressing nicely. This bottom part of the thrust section was moved over to the construction area to be recycled. 
However, engineers continue to work on the top part of the thrust section which contains all the important stuff over at the test area. I just want to add something pretty funny to the mix. Recently, SpaceX has had to help one of their colleagues who managed to get his car stuck on a pile of dirt. Continuing with the launch site, further work has been going on in preparation for the testing of SM4 once that is ready. You can see here that they have removed the hydraulic rams that simulate the amount of thrust from the Raptors. I'm guessing this means they are not planning to use them when they test SM4. This makes a bit of sense since they probably did the test with the SM3 vehicle and proved that the welds and thrust section is strong enough. Now, let's take a little look at the ring tent. As you can see, the tent is now gone. All that remains for now is the crane and we can't see it, but I'm guessing the ring machine is there too. I still don't know where they are moving the ring machine to, but I'm sure we will know when rings start popping out from somewhere new. We'll head over to that new building we've been wondering about, which has obviously been progressing well, but other than that, not much else has been going on. I'm thinking this might be where the ring machine might be going to, but it's too early to say. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. However, over at the high base, some engineers were spotted on top of a building. I guess they just wanted to see how cool Boca Chica looked from up there. I believe that a lot of the work they are doing over in the construction area right now is to prepare for spooling up the production line as Elon Musk said previously. For example, here you can see a giant machine just casually being moved around in the yard. Just lots of changes constantly happening over there. Just before we take a look at SN4, we have yet another Starship vehicle to talk about in this video. SN2 has made an appearance and appears to have a future, but what that may be, I have no idea. However, now we know what the concrete bases are for, as you can see that the tank has been moved onto one of them. My guess would be that they're going to reuse the components from SN2, maybe for SN5? Let me know in the comments down below. Finally, let's get into SN4, which is growing. As we usually do, let's begin with the nose cone, which has been moved some more. Now, the question is, what vehicle would this nose cone be used for? Could we see a full SM4 build, or are they prepping it for SM5? We'll just have to wait and see. Further rings have also been moved around and prepared for when SM4 is ready for stacking. Also, there is a bulkhead in the yard that was flipped over and moved into the high bay. This clip is actually from before my last video, but I wasn't able to include it in that episode. However, I'm pretty sure this is the common bulkhead which separates the methane and oxygen tank. From this picture which I showed in my last video, which was posted by Elon Musk last minute, you can see the methane header tank. The header tanks are used for storing landing propellant during transit between planets. There is obviously one for methane and one for oxygen. Musk previously said they are separate in order to have greater insulation and minimise boil off, avoid sloshing on entry and not have to press up the whole main tank. Finally, before we finish up, I want to show you the amazing diagram from Raphael Adami as always since it provides a great overview of the whole vehicle build. You can really see that there are a few missing pieces, but the majority of it is coming together well. As always, massive thank you to Mary Boca Chica Girl for going out there and capturing amazing footage for NASA Space Flight's YouTube channel and for all of us fans. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to each and every one of my subscribers. We have just hit 500 and I literally cannot thank you enough. I never would have expected this channel to grow so fast and the support and feedback has been amazing. So again, thank you. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX Show. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.